Now, one aspect of assessment that will be new to you is making judgments, making judgments on your students in terms of their learning. Now, this throws a lot of beginning teachers. Uh, of course, you're not used to doing it. You'll soon quickly become used to it uh, and it will no longer become an issue. Um, but for many beginning teachers, the process of having to make judgments that affect students um, on their performance and on their assessment can be daunting. Now, there are various mechanisms and guides to assist you in doing this. Um, I've given you some documents to look at around the processes and expectations of making judgments. So again, that you'll do so in a fair way, um, without bias, and um, so that it can be comparable across uh, multiple students, multiple classes, multiple schools for that matter. And there's also the aspect of incorporating task-specific standards. So this is the idea of having those accessible standards and judging students against those standards. So you're not judging them against your own personal opinion. Yes, of course, you'll have personal opinions. But if you can set down appropriate standards and craft assessment tasks that measure students' performance against those standards, then that provides effective assessment. An assessment that is done without bias, or at least um, minimising bias and minimising other factors that can affect your judgments. Now, you do need to be careful with judgments. There's a whole range of techniques teachers use. Don't always assess students in alphabetical order. Because by the time you get to the end, um, you're sort of worn out from all your assessment and either you're doing it very quickly um, and inflating their grades or you're being um, harsher. Normally, the first couple of students you assess, you assess harsher than the rest because you pay more attention to things. And you're also not quite in, in the groove of assessment yet. After you've done five or six students, you tend to sort of know what you're looking for and you can pick up on things more quickly. But the first few are normally a bit more random in that respect. So many teachers will go back and remark the first couple of students just to make sure that that um, isn't untoward. Uh, reversing the order, alphabetical order that you mark students or randomizing that process can help uh, reduce biases in your judgments. Not looking at students' names is another good technique so that you just assess the student's work. Now, the more you know your students, the harder that is. Of course, you'll be able to pick up on uh, who it is. But that's another technique. You should always try not to look at the student's name until after you've done the assessment. Um, then there's also aspects around standard elaborations. So you should look at these documents around the mechanisms we can have to understand these standards in more detail. Just as we have elaborations around content descriptors, we have elaborations around the assessment standards so that you can better understand the context that they're put in and unpack them in more detail. So have a look at those elaborations and we'll explore those in more detail in the tutorial. The other aspect is around quality assurance. As we talked a bit about before, there are a range of techniques we can apply to try to improve the quality of our assessment. And much of this has to do with how we set our tasks to address those standards. And the more you understand the standards and the different techniques you can utilize to measure students against those standards and improve that process through quality assurance, then the better your assessment techniques will be in making judgments on your students.